It's night. A strong storm begins. You live in a coastal town and watch the raging sea through the window. Lightning strikes through the sky. Huge waves crash against the shore, and a downpour turns the sand into wet clay. In the morning, a lot of fish are going to be washed ashore, you think, and go to bed. It's some strange noise that wakes you up. It's like hundreds of thousands of hands clapping near your window. You go outside and see a huge crowd of people standing by the sea. The popping sound is getting louder, and its source is tons of fish washed ashore. They've been here for several hours, but are still alive. They kick and beat their slippery bodies against the sand. You see carp, trout, sardines, and even a few huge great white sharks. They are full of energy, snapping their big toothy jaws. Somehow, all fish can now breathe air like humans. You help other people throw the fish back into the water. You can see them swim away into the sea depths, but some of them come up and swim close to the surface, enjoying fresh air. You've helped almost all the fish, except for the sharks. A rescue crane arrives. It lifts each of the sharks by its tail, one by one, then carries the fish toward the sea and lets it go. From the news, you learn that air-breathing fish have been washed ashore not only in your city. People find them on beaches all over the world. Scientists and marine researchers have already gone on a sea expedition to study this unique phenomenon. Later in the evening, they announce the results of their study. Now, every sea creature that has gills can also breathe through newly developed lungs. They can stay on land for as long as they want. They only need to have some water to drink, just like other living creatures. Fish absorb water and pass it through their gills. The gills have special receptors that draw the air out of the water and send it to the fish's bloodstream. This way, their bodies receive doses of oxygen needed for life. After this, carbon dioxide is formed. It enters the fish's blood, then passes through the gills and is released back into the water. The ability to breathe through gills has remained unchanged, but the anatomy of these creatures is different now. They've developed lungs and a respiratory tract when a fish is in the water, it closes this tract and blocks access to the lungs. This way, water doesn't get there. But when the fish is on the surface, it closes its gills and opens access to the lungs through the mouth. This amazing metamorphosis doesn't bring significant changes to the world. Yet, dolphins and whales have always had lungs. Air passes through their nostrils, which are located on the top of their heads. This opening is called the blowhole. Dolphins come up to the surface, fill their lungs with air, and go under the water for a few minutes again. Now, not only dolphins, but also all the other sea creatures swim close to the surface. You take a boat to go on a sea trip and see the shocking phenomenon with your own eyes. The further you get from the shore, the more fish you notice in the water. They jump out high and dive back in like dolphins. They seem to be enjoying their new ability. There are so many of them. Several dozen fish jump into your boat. You throw them back into the sea. You see a huge fin and turn off the engine. A shark is swimming a few hundred feet away from you. It's about the size of your boat. Fortunately, it's distracted by other fish and it's not going to hunt you. You turn around and go back to the shore. Dusk is falling. You can see city lights. The sea is filled with glowing jellyfish and phytoplankton. Because of this, the water is gleaming purple and blue. You're fascinated by this sight and don't notice the lights of the town suddenly turn off. You can hear people screaming. The closer you get to the shore, the louder the screams and sounds of something getting crushed. Finally, you arrive at the pier, get out of the boat, and find that a part of the embankment has been ruined. Boats are overturned, street lights are broken, electrical wires are torn. A long trail of transparent, viscous liquid leads from the pier to the town. You slip on this slime once or twice. The streets are empty. Cars are abandoned. Windows and houses are broken. There's garbage everywhere, and the road is also covered with ooze. You hear some kind of popping sound coming from a dark alley. It's approaching you. A small octopus appears on the road. It's moving in a spider-like manner. With the help of its tentacles, the creature climbs a car, jumps onto the wall, and crawls up. 
After this octopus, another one comes out. Several squid follow it. Some of them are clumsily crawling towards you. You take a step back. More and more squid and octopuses appear out of the dark alley. Some of them reach the size of a car. You see a bicycle lying on the ground and get on it. You're traveling through deserted streets with an army of octopuses crawling behind you. The ground starts shaking under the wheels of your bike. You hear a deafening roar of an unknown beast. You look back and immediately regret doing it. A huge monster, the size of a five-story building and similar to a squid, breaks the wall of the nearest house with one hit of its colossal tentacle. The creature has come out of the darkest corner of the sea. Ever since the animal got a pair of lungs, it's been looking forward to taking a breath of fresh, clean air. Instincts brought it to the surface, where it smelled a lot of food. The city lights attracted the Kraken's attention. With its huge tentacles, the Kraken clings to the walls of buildings and the road and catches up with you. You see a tunnel straight ahead. You push the pedals of your bike as hard as you can and manage to get inside. But then, you hear a strange sound behind your back. The Kraken, like an octopus, doesn't have an internal skeleton. Its body consists of muscles. That's why it can squeeze into any hole, like a liquid. The Kraken is chasing you in the tunnel, like a snake with dozens of tails. But its speed is slowing down. You accelerate and get out of the tunnel. Frightened, you travel as fast as you can and reach the nearest city by morning. Here you meet your neighbors and learn that sea monsters unexpectedly appeared in coastal cities all over the world. Fortunately, they don't stay on land for long. They've been living in the cold ocean depths for years, and their skin can't withstand sunlight. At dawn, the monsters return to the water. But sharks and other sea creatures come to the shore to have lunch more and more often. Years have passed, and they've learned to survive on land. They kick, wave their tails, push with their fins, and move clumsily along roads. The residents of coastal cities build huge walls along the beach to stop the invasion of fish and big squid. Sea creatures receive twice their usual amount of oxygen. They absorb it through the gills and fill their lungs with it. Thanks to this, the blood in their bodies circulates better and faster. This makes their muscles stronger and their brains smarter. It becomes difficult to catch fish. They easily break out of fishing nets and jump out of boats. This increases the population of all marine animals and, especially, sharks. It becomes unsafe to travel by any kind of ship. A small fishing boat can be easily overturned by a shark. A huge cruise ship can come across several giant squid. Hundreds and thousands of years pass. More and more fish come to land. Evolution changes the structure of their bodies incredibly quickly. Some fish have grown elongated limbs. Their skin becomes slightly rougher. Their fins and tails remain, but their paws become longer. Imagine a shark with crocodile limbs. This is exactly what most fish look like now. Millions of years of evolution will pass, and fish will resemble people. But they will be covered with scales, with small fins behind the ears and a huge fin on the back. By this time, humanity will colonize many other planets, and fish will become the owners of Earth.